Hey snackers, we have a treat for you this week. Julio Gomez returns by popular demand to talk about his favorite DevOps tools. Hey Snackers, Karim Iskander here. I'm a developer advocate with Cisco DevNet. Hey everyone, uh, Matt Napoli. I am a manager of developer advocacy with the Cisco DevNet program. Welcome to episode 22 of DevNet Snack Minute. Snack Minutes is your weekly 10-minute all things DevNet, giving you a quick, fun way to learn about APIs, coding, or just some school, cool stuff that we think you guys should know. And by popular demand for this episode, we brought back Julio Gomez to talk to us about the coolest cloud-native DevOps tools. Julio, do you mind introducing yourself? Sure. Thanks a lot for having me, team. Uh, my name is Julio Gomez, and uh, these days I'm lucky enough to be running programmability across EMER sales. Yeah, we're glad to have you here, Julio. Um, the first question I actually have is, uh, can you give us a little bit of introduction to what cloud native actually means? Because I think, or at least what it means to you, because I think that there are a number, number of people out there, especially in the Cisco ecosystem, that um, have some varying understanding of what cloud native means to us or to them. Yeah, that's a great question. Cloud native development is a little bit different from uh, the usual development that you might have studied, you know, when you were out of college, you know, in my case, 30 years ago. Um, and it's focused on how you can leverage cloud capabilities in your own development of applications, meaning that in the cloud, you have certain amazing capabilities focused on elasticity and how you can accomplish, how you can grow and shrink your uh, deployments based on the needs of your applications and how much customer traffic you have. So developing applications focus on how you can leverage those cloud capabilities is what we know as cloud native development. Can you give us a little bit of kind of a background for those who are not really familiar with what DevOps, whether it's cloud native or not, uh, mean and that culture uh, in a sense that, you know, how how is it bringing teams together and how is it how is it allowing us to to operate on on day to day basis yeah devops practices have been um trying to find a way around software development for a long time and i think they have accomplished it in many different environments and they are based on how you need to think on about development and software development in this case in a little bit of a different way why because Previously, you were doing big major changes to your software. If you think about financial entities doing these kind of changes twice a year, well, now these days we are thinking about how you can do this several several times a day. And these are much smaller changes, which lead to, in case of failure, smaller failures. And also about how you can automate this process. If you're going to do it several times a day, you need to automate the whole process as much as possible. So it's a mixture of small changes, embracing failure, because it's going to be a small failure, and how you can automate the whole process as much as possible, with a result of being very, very dynamic in terms of implementing new features very, very easily, and being as quick as possible in your time to market. That's very cool. So now that we've kind of set the table for what cloud native means and the potential use cases for um, DevOps, can you give us uh, a little bit of a feeling for some of the tools that kind of play into both concepts and maybe some of your experience around that? We'll, we'll start with kind of the tools and then we can get into the experience. Absolutely. You know, as a network engineer, which has been my background for the last 20 years, when I just got into this new world of cloud native development, I found myself overwhelmed by the number of words, terms, and different things, different stuff that I was not familiar with. Microservices, Docker containers, Kubernetes, a scheduler, service mesh. Wow, that was a plethora of unknown words for me. So the moment that I started uh, uh, studying these different topics, I found out that there was something very, very different from my day to studying software development. And that was the concept of microservices. These microservices are the ones that enable the creation of big applications formed by small slices of code that can grow and shrink depending on the application need. This environment means a lot of things in terms of software development. 
with the main one being, hey, how do you manage all those containers? How do you make sure what, that when you have new code, those containers are updated? So the usual process would be, oh, okay, I develop in my computer, and then I will just send you the code, and you use it in your computer. And unfortunately, that's not the best way to do things because I can guarantee you that it will fail. It's unavoidable. You know, we have different environments, different libraries. It will not work. Um, so we decided that we wanted to use something that could replicate that. And we found tools like, for example, Vagrant. You know, and Vagrant is great to replicate something somewhere else, but it's not very dynamic and it takes a lot of effort, you know, to stand up the new environment in a different, in a different system. So from there you go and, and, and start thinking about containers, Docker containers. And Docker containers are a good vehicle to implement this kind of approach but they are not integrated basically with anything. And in terms of efficiency, you really need to manage them manually. So it's not the best approach either. That's where Kubernetes gets into the equation. And Kubernetes is kind of a scheduler that can manage everything for you. It's the best operations team that you can ever think of. But you know what? At the end of the day, you need to manage the different deployments there. And when you get new code, you need to let Kubernetes know that that new code exists and they need to rebuild your images, publish those images, and then update the containers in the Kubernetes deployment with the new code of those new images. So if you ask me, that's not really the way that I want to work when I'm a software developer. So how do you fix that? You know, what, what, would, what has been my path at least here? Well, I've been through different tools and I have just discovered which ones work for me and why they work for me. So I started with a new tool called Draft. And this Draft tool was great because when you develop new code, you can just tell Draft, hey, update the deployment and it will go and update it. And you will see the new code working, the new application working. And that's fine, but that's manual. It's again manual. I need to tell Draft, hey, just take a look at my new code. Not the best approach if you ask me. I'm all about automation. We are all about automation because we love programmability and APIs, right? So I, I found out that there was another tool that was doing this kind of things automatically called Scaffold. And Scaffold is great because it's automatic and you don't even need a, a package manager like with Drafted where we needed help. So that, that's great, but it's complex. You know, it's complex to operate. It's complex to provision. You need to have the language packages depending on what kind of, what kind of programming language you're using. Not, 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 uh, not very easy to use. So it was okay, but I wanted something else. I wanted something that was a little bit more transparent. As a software developer, I don't care about Docker. I don't care about containers. I don't care about Kubernetes, any kind of scheduler. Please let me focus on my code. I'm a C++ programmer. I'm a Python programmer. I'm not a Kubernetes SRE. So, um, I found another tool that was really, really interesting called Telepresence. Not Cisco Telepresence, you know, but rather another tool called Telepresence. Right, right. And this was great. Telepresence allows you to create a new container running in your laptop, and then that will interact with the remote deployment in production transparently for you. You don't need to do anything. It's automatical. You have that running locally, and it will automatically play games you know, with the remote deployment and it will interact with all the microservices, which is great because you can debug locally and you can interact remotely and you can use your own IDE, your integrated development environment. That's perfect. But still, it's interacting with something remotely. In the ideal world, I would like to focus on my code and not have anything running locally, no Docker, no Kubernetes, no nothing, no interaction. I want my code locally but being executed remotely. That's kind of the Nirvana situation for me. And that's where I arrived last year with a new tool that I found called Octeto. And Octeto does exactly that. It synchronizes the code that I have in my computer, the folder where I'm storing all the code, it's synchronized with the remote environment and it automatically creates all the containers, all the deployments, updates the images, publishes the code transparently for me. So in my computer, I only have my integrated development environment. I develop my code and it automatically is reflected in the remote production environment, testing environment or staging, wherever you want it to. 
So no Docker, no Kubernetes. I can test my code live in the real environment. I can use my own IDE. I use minimal resources. And it can, I can even have my code in a shared repository so that we can all collaborate, the three of us, for example, you know, in that code. So very, very powerful. From the moment that I discovered Octeto, my life, my life, my work life as a developer has changed because now I can just work in the ideal Nirvana situation that I was always dreaming of. That is that's awesome, and that was a lot of uh, a lot of tools that that for, first of all, some of them I, I, I first time hearing from you, so I, I made notes for myself to go check them out. Uh, what I'd like to know is what was the ramp up on um, for you to to adopt these these new tools. Uh, for you? Was it something that super simple that you just go download, read docs, and because you understand the concept to get started with it? Or what, what was your experience with, especially with Octeto? I think this is where I call rabbit holes. You know, you start learning about something and then suddenly you realize how deep that rabbit hole is. It's, right. a fr right. it's freaking amazing. You can just invest as much time as you want. Uh, but for these specific tools, I found out that the moment that you know about microservices, containers, and Kubernetes, it's very easy to start evaluating different tools that play as per the rules that you want them to play. So if you are interested in having something local that you can play with, you can choose the basic tools. But if you want something a little bit more elaborate, you can go with the others. The amount of time that you need to invest once that you have all that foundational knowledge baseline that, that, that you have with you, it's not that difficult. It's actually quite easy. But I have tried to give back to the community by documenting the whole process that I went through so that you don't have to waste two years of your life like I did. You can just waste six months and learn as much as I know. So I've published all of this content um, and made it available via um, a couple of GitHub repositories, but also in my blog series so that you can get access to all of that information. Yeah, and we mentioned your blog series the last time you were on, and I can't say enough good things about it. Um, but uh, the, I have not read these ones on these new tools, so now that's literally the thing I'm going to do over the weekend, this weekend. So I'm really excited about that. Julio, I hate to, to, to end this, but this is about all the time that we have um, you know, for everyone out there. I hope you get a chance to check out Julio's, um, Julio's blog series. Uh, he has a bunch covering... Uh, DevOps, Net DevOps, Cloud Native Tooling, um, and uh, thank you so much for your time, Julio. Again, uh, appreciate having you back, and uh, thank you, thanks, thanks to everyone for joining us this week. And we'll catch you on the next episode. Thank you, thank you a lot for having.